Hey there everyone, hope we're all doing really really well. It's almost the weekend here, so um, hope we all have that Friday feeling. Although anyone in the UK probably doesn't, we've just had our, our budget, our autumn budget, which was announced yesterday, and it's a very, very, very hard time for most people, most families out there. Um, I could go into a huge amount of detail on that, but the budget is vast. I might do some additional episodes breaking down certain elements from that and what the impact might be for people. Um, but for this episode, I wanted to talk about something that was announced, not totally unexpected, but still could hit us in the pocket. And that is a tax on electric vehicles. Now, I don't know about the rest of the world, but there has been an increase in the electric vehicle uptake in the last couple of years. Here in the UK, somewhere in the region of 10 to 20 percent new cars are now electric vehicles. And um, again, I'm not really sure about the rest of the world, but here in the UK, um, historically, obviously petrol and diesel cars, you've had to pay a road tax in order to be able to drive your car. In addition to having to have an annual checkup called an MOT and in addition to having to have insurance to be able to drive. Um, the government has been keen to push um, the uptake and the switch over from fossil fuel cars to electric cars and apart from the environmental benefits one of the big pushes one of the big incentives that the government pushed on us was the fact you might get cheaper insurance and you don't have to pay road tax. Road tax typically was um, calculated based on the size of the car, the size of the engine and the emissions. Of course, you don't get emissions in electric vehicles, therefore you didn't pay anything. Now, that was obviously huge propaganda pandering on the cost element and the, the fact that electric vehicles, pound for pound, cost more than their petrol or diesel counterparts. But if you don't have to pay road tax, if you potentially get cheaper insurance, then that potentially offsets the running cost of the vehicle and could make it more viable in an ongoing basis plus cheaper electricity free fossil fuel cost rises meant that the ongoing running cost of the vehicle was cheaper than say the fossil fuel alternative again trying to accelerate that switch over um, now we're not stupid we all knew that eventually um, with the electric car becoming dominant when fossil fuel cars would no longer be able to be uh, bought and sold uh, everything would be taxable. There'd be no free electricity units at the pump. You'd have to pay for those just like you would for your petrol or, or gas. Um, and we would get taxed. We knew that this was going to happen at some point. In the UK, the government makes billions from the road tax that they charge and the commission, which they call a fuel duty, on every unit of petrol or gas or diesel. They make billions. If you pay... Uh, say a pound, pound fifty at the pump, you're talking 80, 90, 95 percent of that going straight to the government. They're not going to lose that revenue. We knew at some point this was going to come in. But as I said earlier, where most UK manufacturers are saying that, say, 10, 15, 20 percent of their vehicle sales are electric or hybrid, the switchover for fossil fuel vehicles to hybrid or greener alternatives hasn't happened yet. So a lot of motoring groups are saying that this tax, this levy, is coming in far too soon and could actually act as a deterrent. It could delay all those plans that the government has been talking to us about. For example, they want to ban new uh, sales of vehicles which are fossil fuel by something like 2030, 2035, so that you can only buy a hybrid or only buy an electric-only vehicle from that point on. Well, this looks like that's going to delay that because people are going to hold on to their cars for longer. This is probably going to slow the demand for buying electric vehicles. The other thing that this might affect is more of a longer term green initiative. The UK has signed up to various international charters about CO2 emissions, greenhouse gases, being greener, being cleaner, of which pollution from vehicles is a major con contributing factor. If the delay in that switchover is affected, even by only a few years as a result of this, that will have ramifications. We're probably going to have some form of penalty, some form of financial repercussion if we don't adhere to those dates. Well, that's going to hit us in the pocket even more. So in the short term, anyone who's looking to buy an electric vehicle, you have to pay a premium to buy the vehicle. Anyone who owns an electric vehicle will already be feeling the pinch of our utility bills going up, therefore the cost of refilling it or charging it is going up and now you're going to feel 
a third whammy, which is you have to pay a tax for it. Something that wouldn't have been budgeted when you made that switch over anyway. Um, again, I'm not really too sure how this might affect um, viewers and listeners overseas. I'm not sure if you guys have to pay a similar sort of duty or tax on your vehicles, but certainly over here, um, the cost of motoring is going up all the time based on energy prices going up. So this is just going to compound that even more. Whatever type of vehicle you have, there's going to be no reprieve. You know, we have annual inspections called the MOT. We have road tax, which is now going to be payable on any vehicle of any type. Insurance costs are going up as well. Whatever unit, whether it be charge or fuel that we need for our vehicles, is going up as well. Every motorist in any way, shape or form is now being hit in the pocket. And as I say, the longer term repercussions are a slowing down or a detrimental effect or a delay to the switchover, the uptake from fossil fuel vehicles to electric vehicles. If this has a knock on effect for a wider, longer term plan, that's only going to affect us even more. Uh, the doom and gloom just doesn't look like it's going to go away anytime soon. I'm curious to get your thoughts. I'm curious to see anyone who's got an electric vehicle. Does this increase any worries or concerns that you might have? Might you even consider selling your vehicle and relying on public transport? Anyone who owns a fossil fuel vehicle who was thinking about swapping for an electric, has this now put any form of doubt, worry or delay into your mind? Are you going to hold on to your vehicles for longer? Are you now put off by the fact that the cost of the vehicles which was always higher anyway, is now supplemented by no reduction in insurance costs. Now you have to pay a road tax as well. Does that affect your line of thinking at all? And I'd be curious to see what international viewers and listeners have to say as well. Get in touch on the socials, get in touch through the comments. I'd love to know if you also have to pay premiums or taxes for the rights to own a cleaner vehicle. Um, let me know. Hopefully hear from you guys soon. Take care.